Yeah. So. <clears throat> All right. So the second problem asks us to show that any continuous uh, homomorphism from Z P uh, to T. is given by x gets sent to exponent X, Y. Uh -huh. All right. uh, where Y is in Q. Okay. First of all, is it clear that this uh, this map for any Y is actually a map from from uh, this athlete to T? I mean, there is no complex exponent on uh, periodic numbers, so. Uh, sorry, do you ask uh, why two, uh, what is 2 pi a in this case? No, I mean, do you get why this map is actually a map? Uh, so <clears throat> suppose you, you, you have some given, uh, <clears throat> given y, y from QP. Uh, is it obvious how to compute this thing for any, for any x from this, this RP? Of course, there is no two pi i in, in periodic numbers, but uh, the, the, do you understand how to compute this thing? No, I don't. Uh, okay, so. Well, let's try to understand it. So uh, suppose you have like uh, y equals uh, p to the minus one, suppose that you, you have something like this. Uh, if you have exponent of uh, two pi i x over p, then the value of this function, uh, for example, on integers, only depends on uh, the residue modulo p, right? Correct? Yes. So if y is given by, say, p to the minus n multiplied by some h, and h is co prime to p, then uh, the same thing can, can, can be said about uh, this function, this exponent. So it's uh, p to the n uh, periodic. So it's enough to define it for uh, natural numbers that are uh, from one to p to the n, and then everything else goes to the value of this function on the residue module p to the n. Okay. This is sorry. Uh, in, in this case, we don't consider any series. It's uh, just no, 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 no series. Notation. 
it, it, it's just just a notation. Yeah, no, no series at all. Okay, so uh, so is uh, the definition clear? Hmm? Yes, but but here edge may be maybe a series. What? I mean, if we regard QP as a series of uh, of a power series with with variable p, then ah, uh, you see, uh, you can always uh, represent your y uh, in the form p to the minus n. Uh, multiplied by some natural number h plus some element of z sub p, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if uh, z lies in z sub p, then uh, you just set uh, exponent of uh, 2 pi i uh, x z to 1 because, well, obviously, okay. <coughs> I see, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, do we want to uh, just to prove that uh, this map is periodic with period uh, uh, P to uh, Well, it's, it's kind of obvious, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what do we need to prove in, in, in the question is uh, that every homomorphism from, from Z sub P to T uh, that is uh, that is continuous uh, has this form. So uh, I ask if it is equal that uh, it has uh, some period uh, uh, p two. Uh... Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. So how do we prove? such a statement. Uh, first of all, uh, so <coughs> how can uh, maps from Z sub P to T look if they are um, uh, continuous? So uh, P to, uh, to N uh, should uh, be mapped to the origin of one. To what? Some uh, small neighborhood, I mean, of one. P to the, to the N should, sh 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 should map uh, into something close to uh, one for large N. Mm -hmm. So... So what? Actually, uh, let's consider uh, this. Uh, suppose that we have some homomorphism chi from Z sub P to T and it is continuous. Let's consider the kernel of this homomorphism. What can we say about this kernel? Huh? It is an ideal, so uh, it uh, should what, what be. What do you mean? What, what, why is it? Is it an ideal? Ideal. Ideal. Uh, why, why is this true? We consider oh, uh, this P as an additive group. Oh, okay, so it is not true. Okay, so what can oh, we say yeah, about no, this? Okay. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's look it, from a topological is, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from a topological pers perspective, uh, kernel of chi is what? Yeah, correct. It's a pre-image of uh, one. So what, what can we say about the pre-image of one 
un under the uh, the continuous map. It is closed. Uh, it is closed, of mm -hmm. course, and it it is not only closed. It is also uh, uh, it, it, it it also contains zero, right? Correct. So I claim. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, and uh, now we should uh, and uh, we assume that it is discrete uh, at zero. Yes. Uh, what, what do you mean? That. Uh, uh, so we want to prove that it is not zero. Yeah. What is not zero? Uh, this kernel. Uh, this kernel. Uh, ah. Yeah, it's 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 of course possible to uh, to be zero in this case, uh, but uh, well, if it's zero, uh, then the map is a by uh, is a bijection, right? Uh, and uh, it, it, so, so it will, will, would be a homeomorphism, which is not the case here, correct? <coughs> so kernel is, is, is uh, surely not equal to zero. Oh, so uh, is it clear that the that, that, that kernel of any character is not equal to zero? Uh, sorry, I, I don't understand this. So suppose that we have some uh, continuous, uh, continuous <coughs> from Z sub P to T. Uh-huh. Yes. Then uh, I claim that the kernel of this uh, homomorphism is non-zero. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was zero, then it would be an injective map, right? Yes. Uh, so mm, what, what do we get from, from this? Uh, what do we get from this? Uh, Wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the image will be. Uh -huh. No, m m maybe this is a, a bit incorrect. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, if P to N maps to the uh, epsilon neighborhood of one, uh, but not uh, to one, when we can take its power, so P to N K maps to uh, uh, one plus, uh, plus K epsilon. Ah, so. So, so it gives us a contradiction if we choose uh, this uh, neighborhood uh, so small that uh, p2 uh, uh, the power which is greater than n uh, always maps to this uh, ah nice argument so there is an epsilon uh, such that uh, chi of uh, p to the n uh, minus one uh, <laughs> Say so, epsilon. There is an n such that for any n greater than n, uh, this thing is uh, always uh, close to zero, right? This is your argument. So uh, small elements of of z, z sub p uh, are mapped into small neighborhood of one. 
correct? But this is clearly impossible because if, if you have uh, if you have an element in, in, in small neighborhood, uh, then you can uh, <coughs> say multiply it by, by two or three uh, and, and get outside this, this neighborhood in, in a finite number of uh, applications of this map. Uh, is this your argument? Yes, it is. Okay, so. Uh, so, so there is one more. I think there is a different one. If you continue in that same, if, what, what you were saying, Sasha, then uh, uh, we, we can say that, yes, suppose that there is an injective map, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Then we can realize that P, uh, uh, that P as a subspace of this, right? Uh, uh, so, so it, it is possible. You, you have a counter, counter set, right? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Okay, so uh, the, the argument of, uh, about large powers is, is clear, right? So if, if you take a large power of uh, P, then <coughs> its image will be close to one. Uh, moreover, uh, any, any uh, uh, what I would, would, would say is that, uh, P to the n multiplied by uh, Z sub P, uh, the, the whole of this set will be mapped into some neighborhood of one, uh, for, for some small neighborhood of one for, for large n. And this is clearly impossible because uh, it is impossible, <coughs> impossible to have uh, Mm, the set that is uh, invariant with respect to addition lies in the small neighborhood of one and is not equal to uh, one. Correct? Uh, closed under multiplication. Not oh, under multiplication, of course. So, so you, you cannot have a subgroup that uh, lies in a small neighborhood of one. That's the argument. Okay. Because if yeah, you have, it's, uh, it's, it's clear. I think. Huh? I think it's clear for me. Okay, okay. So uh, what we got now is that uh, uh, is that for some n, chi of uh, p to the n is actually equal to zero. Uh, I, I mean to one, to one. Uh, if uh, chi of p to the n is equal to one. This means that our map is actually a map of uh, z sub p over p to the n uh, z sub p to t. And such a map is actually just a character of the corresponding cyclic group. And all the characters of, of this cyclic group are easily written as uh, as uh, maps of the form uh, exponent of two pi i x pi. <coughs> okay. So, uh, so, so, so the the first the first part is is rather clear, I guess. And the second uh, part is about the, uh, the, the, the compact open topology. Uh, you can actually look uh, at this uh, compact open topology as uh, the topology of uh, uh, supremum norm, right? It is the topology of convergence on uh, compact sets. So uh, actually you can uh, turn any, uh, you, you, you can compute the, the, the norm of a, any, uh, any continuous function on uh, Z sub P into T as uh, the supremum over all uh, 
the sub p absolute value of f of x, right? And uh, we claim that our set of characters is actually discrete in this norm. How, how do we show this? <clears throat> Any ideas? Uh, do, do we want to prove that for a fixed character? Uh, in, uh, in, its, uh, in some neighborhood of it, we uh, do not have uh, any other characters, is it? Yeah, something like this. Ой, Ильяс, у нас там, кажется, опять кто-то логиниться не может. А, -а, а, сейчас. Так. Maybe we can uh, take the uh, fraction of two elements and to prove that uh, it's... Uh, uh, image or image of its power <clears throat> uh, can be large enough. So we know this because uh, we can. So we can take powers, and if uh, this fraction is not equal to one, such power sh should be uh, larger uh, than uh, uh, one half at, at, at some point. Ah, so you you, you say that. Uh... Suppose that uh, chi of x uh, is not equal to chi of z, right? Something like this. Uh, no, uh, I, I'm sorry, no, not like this, uh, incorrect and correct. Uh, chi uh, one of, uh, of, suppose that we have two different characters, chi one and chi two. And suppose that we have uh, chi one of x is not equal to chi 2 of x, right? Yes. Uh, then we have uh, some value a, which is the quotient of uh, chi 1 over chi 2 of x. And you can take a power of this, uh, of this value, uh, and it is, it, sometimes this will be Mm, close to say uh, well sometimes it, 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 it will be far from one right this is the argument so for, for, for fixed for, for fixed p, you can always found, find a uh, value k such that uh, a to the k in this case is equal to say exponent of uh, something like two pi i over, over p, right? Because if, if the value of character is not equal to one, then it is equal to the exponent of some uh, fraction with denominator p to the n, right? 
So you can find a value of k such that you, you have su such formula. And this means that any two characters, uh, uh, the, 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 the distance between any two characters is bounded from, uh, from below uniformly in these characters, right? Yes. So this means that uh, this means that our set is a discrete set in in, in the uh, in, in in the compact open topology, precisely, right? That's it. That's actually a general phenomenon because if you have any compact group, then you can uh, consider the group of all maps from this group to the uh, unit circle, and then uh, this group will be um, discrete in the compact open topology. Okay, let's discuss something else. Okay. So the next one is similar to what we discussed last time. Да, а ты ты разобрался с этим? А, во, хорошо. So it's similar to what we discussed last time, right? It's Z star. Uh, did he make it in? Oh, I knew it. Uh -huh. You have just started, yes? We've discussed the problem already. Uh, oh. it, 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 it is the third problem. Что-то очень странно работает. Но записи будут все равно, так что ничего страшного. Okay, so the next problem is similar to what we discussed last time, right? When we were trying to compute z mod uh, power of a prime. Uh, when we tried to compute z star power of a prime, mod power of a prime. So what, um, <clears throat> how would we prove something like that? So we, we know that uh, the first one, uh, it is uh, the, uh, it is the um, sub, uh, 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 it, it is a subset of z uh, p and the first so, uh, coefficient should be not zero modular p. Uh, so, so, so we just want to prove that uh, one plus p uh, that p is isomorphic to that that p. Well, I mean, you, you don't have to prove that. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess you do. Okay. Why? I, we don't. Have... Well, I mean, no, I mean, it, 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 it's it's just. Let's see. One plus p uh, z p uh, with uh, multiplication. Yeah, that's right. It, it, uh, ah, maybe here we can uh, uh, do ex exponent or so something like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's basically similar to uh, exponent versus logarithm, right? Mm. But if you multiply, yeah, if you, if you multiply two numbers like that, I mean, what do you get? Right? You have one plus. Hey, uh, for uh, what, what were you gonna say? Uh, one plus uh, a p multiplied by one plus b p. It is mm -hmm. uh, one plus p multiplied by a plus b plus p a b. Mm -hmm. And then. And then what? 
how do we extend it? No, sorry, uh, do, what do we ask? Uh... Okay, so 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 we, we, we basically just proved it, right? That like what well, uh that one uh, one plus uh AP one plus BP. But I mean you could you could write this down, right? This ZP. You could write it out as uh, one plus wait, what happened? What's happening? I'm sorry. What's happening? Sorry. Uh, I, I, I think the most uh, convenient way to prove this uh, isomorphism is using logarithm. Do, do yeah, yeah, any... that's what I was saying, yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, l l let's write down what, what we want to prove. Oh, please don't erase this stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we want to prove that this stuff under multiplication is isomorphic to Z sub P under addition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Petya proposed <coughs> uh, uh, looking for the logarithm here, right? Petya? Uh, I uh, uh, um, say it about ex exponents. Ah, so... Uh, Ex exponent should uh, should map additive things into multiplicative. So uh, you can consider exponent of uh, x, uh, exponent of x, uh, oops, oops, exponent of x is uh, uh, sum of uh, x to the n uh, over n factorial. And when does uh, the, 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 this series converge? Maybe when uh, x is divided by p. When is what? X is divided by p. Divisible. So, you, you divisible, mean divisible. Oh, sorry, divisible. OK, so, uh, so this series con converges when uh, x is divisible by p. Uh, notice that this statement actually uses the fact that p is greater than two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you can uh, you can look at exponent as a map from p uh, z sub p plus to something. Uh, and I, I guess you, you are going to get mapped into one plus P uh, Z sub P, right? As, as far as I can get it, this is correct, right? Yes. Maybe okay. we should say why it is subjective. Uh, so that, yeah, we, we need to, Prove that this map is actually surjective. To do so, uh, we can uh, construct an inverse of this map, right? Which is logarithm of uh, one plus uh, px, which is, of course, a convergent series sum of uh, minus one to the uh, n minus one, uh, p to the n, uh, x to the n over n. And this is, of course, an inverse of uh, our map. Correct? Okay, so, uh, so in case when uh, p is greater than two, we have something like this. Actually, you can also uh, prove this fact using the representation of Z sub P as a projective limit of uh, Z over P, P to the NZ. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, but then, then you uh, will be faced with the problem of determining the, the multiplicative group of, uh, uh, of finite ring, okay? <laughs> this is... Uh, N not uh, not much simpler than this question. Okay, but what will happen if P is equal to two? This is the interesting question. Uh, 
but but actually, I was going to say we, we discussed this last time, right? Remember the uh, the the, the uh, multiplicative group of the finite ring? We did that uh, one plus p to the power of p k minus one. It's the same argument to the power of p k minus one. This is in fact uh, one mod p k. But it's not one mod p k uh, if we raise it to the power of p k minus two. Right. So we know that this will lie in the kernel of every single one of this, uh, every single one of these powers of uh, P. Mm -hmm. Right? Sir. Да, так тоже можно. What will happen when, when p is equal to 2? Did, did, did we uh, discuss the case when p is equal to 2? Mm -hmm. And something weird happens when we do the power of 2. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, uh, this is uh, because the exponent uh, stops uh, being convergent. Uh, wh when does the exponent of x converge when p is equal to when, 2? Uh, when x is uh, uh, di divisible by 4. By 4. Uh, yeah, of course. So if uh, so, the exponent in this case will be a map from uh, from four times uh, z2 uh, into into what? Uh, into uh, one plus uh, four z2 uh, star, something like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So what we need to figure out out is uh, uh, the, the last factor that uh, that remains here is actually z o four z star, and what what is what is the form of this group? What what is this group isomorphic to? Z o four z star. Anyone? It is z uh, z over three z. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, z over two z. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> okay, and we have less than one minute left on this recording as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start a new one. Oh, oh my. Uh... Mm-hmm. <clears throat>